Hey Space Engineer, in this video I'm gonna show you how to use my automatic mining platform script. We are gonna see how to build a basic mining platform, how to set up and use the script and how to use its advanced features. The basic mining platform setup is really simple. All you need is two pistons, a rotor, a drill and some conveyors. Also, let's not forget about the programmable block. But first, let's find a place that has mostly flat surface. This place seems good. Let's start building. Place a block, a conveyor, go up 6 blocks, put a conveyor block on the top, then go sideways 8 blocks, Another conveyor, the advanced rotor, a conveyor, a piston sideways, a conveyor block, a piston facing downwards, and lastly, the drill. This is the basic structure. If we want to set up the script, we'll need a programmable block. Also, we'll need some power, so let's add the battery. Since I'm here, I'm gonna add a cargo container as well. We are gonna need that when the mining is started. To get the script, access the programmable block, click Edit, Browse Scripts, Search Automatic Mining Platform, select it. Copy to editor. Check code. Oh. From here you can use the script to guide you. Type set and press run. The script identifies its components based on name tags, so you have to rename them. If you go inside the script and scroll down, you can find the quick setup and the first point, the renaming. In short, what you have to do is to add the main tag to the names of the components you want to use. The default main tag is slash mine01 slash, but you can change it right here if you want. For now, I stay with the default one. As you can see, there are two kinds of components here, basic and advanced. For the basic setup, you will only need basic ones, so let's copy the main tag and escape. Let's use the set again, and as you can see, there are four types of components listed here. First, let's rename the rotor and the drill. As for the pistons, they are a bit different because we have to tell the script with a special tag if a piston is horizontal or vertical. A piston facing sideways is a horizontal piston and a piston facing downwards is a vertical piston. This one faces sideways, so it's horizontal. Let's access it directly. Add the main tag. Then add the slash or slash tag. This one faces downwards, so it's vertical. To this one, add the main tag. And the slash where slash tag. It's pretty straightforward, right? With this, the renaming is done. So let's go back to the program email block and use the set again. Now it says that the components are ready and the system is ready to start. It also says aligning starting position, which means that the script tries to align the components to a state where all the pistons are retracted and the rotor is either at its max or min limit. You can also see that there is a step counter here. The script calculates, based on the number of pistons and drills you use, how many steps and time will it take to finish the mining. Also, there is a progression bar, because it looks cool. From here, if you see the system ready to start message, that means that the basic setup is finished. The next step is the configuration, but I'm gonna talk about that later, because if you want to use a basic structure like this, then you can skip it. To start the mining, access the programmable block and use the start command. If 
If a component that was added to the script gets destroyed or is missing for some reason, then the script could crash and it stops working. If it happens, then recompile the script to make it work again. If you want to pause the mining, you can do that by using the command pause and you can continue with the start. Based on the terrain, the first rotations may not mine anything. You can solve that in multiple ways, but there is a trick that I want to show you. If you access the programmable block on type set, type a semicolon and a 2 and run the script. This will try to align the structure to the second step of the mining. Every even step represents a pistol movement and every odd step represents a rotation. You are only allowed to set the structure to a pistol movement, so the script only accepts even numbers. You can try any even number with the set until you find the position you like. After that, start the mining with the start command. Oops, the mining stopped. Well, that's actually intended because the script has an auto pause feature. If the drill's inventory is almost full, then the script stops the mining. If there is enough free space again, the script restarts. For now, I just add the second container here so the mining can continue. can assign cargo blocks or any block that has inventory to the script. All you have to do is to add the main tag to the names, then use the refresh command. The script displays how much these blocks are filled, also the auto pause feature will use these blocks as reference instead of the drill. If you want, you can add LCD opponents to the script as well, in the same way as you did it with the cargo blocks. Well, it seems like the cargo is filled again, so let's add one more container. In default, the auto pause restarts the script if at least 50% of the cargo is free, but we got so much stone here that one more container is not enough. If this happens, you can override the auto pause if you start the script again. In default, the script enables the shear inertia tensor for the rotor and the pistons to improve stability. But, sometimes, it could cause the rotor to turn really slow, if it happens, then disable it for the rotor to fix it. Just before the end of the mining, I had to add a fourth container, and that proves that even a basic setup like this can be really effective. When the mining is finished, the pistons are gonna be retracted, and the drills are gonna stop. You'll also see the mining completed message on the screen and that the progression have reached 100%. This simple setup have managed to mine out more than 3 million kilograms of stone, which is quite good. You can get even more if you use more components. As you can see, with one drill, the platform misses the center, but if you add more, you can solve that easily. If you add the drill, make sure to place it towards the center. It's important because in default the script uses the adaptive extension and speed feature. This feature 
based on how many drills and horizontal pistons you use, calculates how much the horizontal piston should extend and how fast the rotor should turn to optimize effectiveness and stability. For the basic setup, with one horizontal piston, three drills is enough to mine out the center. However, using four drills is the most optimal because the center will be mined out and the mining sequence will reach its maximum speed. Of course, in the case of this platform, it's not optimal to mine out the leftover center like this. There are better ways to do it, but I'm gonna talk about that in another video. If you want to use multiple drills, then don't use drills with spaces, because there will be leftover voxels all over the place and the mining will stack. I'm gonna stop this for now and let's talk about pistons a bit. If you stay with this basic structure, then you can add any number of horizontal or vertical pistons without having to configure anything inside the script. If you remember, for the upward pillar, we used 6 conveyor tubes, and the fully extended piston is 6 blocks high, so couldn't we use a piston as a pillar? Well, we can. I'm gonna build a new platform here pretty quick, and I'm gonna use an upward facing piston for it. The script can handle vertical pistons that are facing the other way, they will be used inverted to the regular vertical pistons. To tell the script to handle a vertical piston inverted, after the where special tag, add the slash inv slash tag to. By adding a single inverted vertical piston to the platform, you can double the amount of storm you will get. There is one more feature that I want to show you. You can also add timers to the script, and they will be started when a certain event happens. If you add the main tag to the name of the timer, then use refresh, then the script restarts the timer when the mining is finished. In addition, you can also add another timer if you use the slash add slash tag after its main tag. This one starts each time, the auto pause stops the mining. You can use these timers with any combination of blocks to enhance your platform. For example, you can place a sound block to the platform and play it with the advanced timer, so every time the mining stops because of the auto pause, an alarm will place. Of course, you can be creative about this and use any blocks you want. With this, we finish the basics. There is gonna be another video where I'm gonna show how to use the script on a small grid, how to broadcast the progression to another grid's LCD, and how to build and configure advanced structures. I hope this video was useful to you. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment or you can visit the scripts workshop page. As for this video, I'm signing out. Objective complete. Wait, 